Theodora Crane is the middle child of the Crane siblings. Like the cliché of the middle child, she is often seen off on her own. But this isn't due to oversight by her family. Theo just seems perfectly content with her personal space and alone time. This, however, does not mean she is disinterested or cut off from her family. Quite the opposite. She is deeply sensitive and caring to those she loves and cares about. As a young girl, during her time at Hill House, Theo often remarks about how cold the house is. She's seen wearing a sweater even when it is hot out. She's mostly seen reading a book, wandering the house on her own, or dancing in her dance room. As an adult, Theo is described as a brick wall by the people who know her. She has a very cool demeanor and is seen very direct and frank to the point of being a bit callous. This is a personality trait that she seems to have always had even as a child. During an intimate moment, Hugh and Olivia muse about their children growing up and how they will no longer be able to cuddle and hold their children while they slept. Olivia remarks about Theo. She would never, not even when she was little. It seems like Theo has always liked her physical space, even as a little girl. While Theo is mostly reserved and cool, she's also a deeply passionate person. While Theo loves her privacy and space, she makes it an effort to be with her family. She moves into the guest house to be close to Shirley. She does this to keep Shirley company because she knows Shirley has a tendency of pushing people away. Ironically, Theo does this as well, and the two of them seem to foster this behavior rather than discourage it as she had hoped. She's the one who encourages Shirley to put up barriers between her and the twins. This leads to disaster as the two twins become lost in their own issues and misery. Theo is also a passionate lover and seems to be an outgoing introvert. She loves to visit clubs and dance late into the night. She also has an active sex life which amuses Shirley. You're like a guy. You're worse than a guy. You're like a frat guy. When I said you could live here, I wasn't expecting the pussy parade. Theo is very much in charge and comfortable with her sexuality and is very flirtatious and charming when she wants to be. But once the deed is done, she can turn ice cold. This is seen when she hooks up with Trish. She approaches Trish at the club and the two share a passionate dance, which leads to sex. But right after that is finished, Theo basically kicks Trish out, using the classic, I have to get up early for work tomorrow line. We see dualities with Theo. She prefers to be alone, yet she is incredibly family-centric. She is a passionate lover, yet she also dismisses her lovers readily and easily. She is extremely aloof at times, Yet she is incredibly sensitive and insightful, like a fire that burns cold. While all the Crane children are sensitive, the girls are most like their mother, Olivia, who seems to be gifted with a connection to the supernatural, or as Steve likes to call it, the preternatural. While all the Crane women appear to be clairvoyant, they are gifted in different ways. Shirley seems to only be able to access this connection when she is unconscious and not in control. She says certain things in her sleep that displays a certain level of clairvoyance. Nell is very sensitive and is constantly haunted by the bent neck lady. She also seems to be the most susceptible to the effects of Hill House. Theo, on the other hand, has the ability to gather truth from touch. When she touches objects, she is able to sense what is being hidden. When she is touched, or touches another person, 
he's able to feel and know what the other person is feeling or thinking. While at Hill House, Theo uses her ability quite a bit and reveals a lot of secrets and truths about Hill House. It starts off with a minor discovery. As she helps Hugh sort through junk from the pantry, she's able to determine that a nailed up box contains something fancy. It turns out to be a 49 Claude Dubois. Next, she is able to determine what the strange horn in the kitchen is just through the use of her touch. She is able to correctly determine that it was a speaking tube used to communicate within the house. When she goes upstairs to demonstrate, she is able to uncover that the bed next to the speaking tube used to be a sick bed. It is later revealed in the show that this bed belonged to Hazel Hill, who lived to an old age and was taken care of by Clara Dudley. When Luke is caught and chastised for playing with the old dumbwaiter by Clara Dudley, Theo interjects and demands that Clara unhand Luke. This is a foreshadow, and it shows how she'll turn out as an adult. Theo is a strong defender of children, and isn't afraid to speak up to defend others. Reprimanding Clara, and saying that just asking Luke to stop was enough. Clara agrees, and as she touches Theo very briefly on the shoulder, the contact shows Theo that Clara wasn't trying to be mean, but was acting out of fear and was trying to protect Luke. When Theo accidentally sends Luke down the dumbwaiter, where he is attacked by the burnt ghost in the hidden basement, she goes to apologize to him. During their conversation, she touches his hand briefly and is able to determine that he is telling the truth about the basement. This leads her to uncover the basement and find remnants of Luke's torn pocket, which she is able to determine, through touching the pocket, how frightened Luke was when he was trapped in the basement. After a little more investigating, she stumbles upon a hidden ledger, and is able to tell, just through her power, that the book was something that was meant to be hidden. This is of course because this basement used to be a speakeasy, and was illegal during the Prohibition era. When she shows the book to Olivia to prove to her that Luke was telling the truth, Olivia gently chastises her for going into the basement alone, but praises Theo on her bravery. Unfortunately, the sweet moment is cut short when Olivia touches Theo. Theo has a terrible vision of her mother with her head split open, this, of course, is how Olivia dies. Theo later sees moments and flashes of what happened during the deadly tea party in the Red Room when Hugh touches her. She sees Hugh pushing Olivia, which leads her to withdraw from Hugh's touch, screaming not to touch her. Out of all the cranes, she is arguably the most attuned to her abilities. She's also the only one who uses her ability in a constant and ever-present way. It isn't something that comes and goes, like Nell's visions or Shirley's dreams. It is ever-present, seemingly as much of a curse as it is a gift. To control this power, Olivia gives Theo a pair of gloves. This keeps her from becoming too overwhelmed by her abilities. She continues to wear gloves as an adult, to the point where she's rarely seen without them. While the gloves work to protect her, it becomes an emotional crutch and holds her back in many ways. She becomes completely reliant on them and cannot live her normal life without them. As an adult, she uses her ability to help children and is a very successful child psychologist with a great track record. She is very open and gentle with her patients, 
this is where a lot of Theo's softer side is on full display. Only with children does she seem to let her guard down. This is necessary to gain their trust, but it also lets their trauma affect her in turn. Theo takes on a patient named Kelsey, a girl who is displaying some behavioral issues at school and home. Kelsey says she's being haunted by something she calls Mr. Smiley, a scary monster that lives in the basement. Mr. Smiley is described as having a huge smile that is unnaturally big. Kelsey also says he's always smiling, but he isn't happy. Theo tries to uncover more using her abilities, but is being walled out by Kelsey. This is an instance where we, the audience, can see Theo is unable to utilize her abilities in the same way she is usually able to do, showing her limitations. This leads Theo telling Kelsey that they are very much alike, and she says, See, when I was little, I was afraid of a lot of things. I didn't have to be, though. They were all in my head. I just didn't know that yet. But when I was scared, I would imagine myself building a big wall all around me, made of the strongest bricks in the world. And when I got scared, I'd imagine myself putting another one on, one after the other, until the wall was so thick and so strong, I knew I would be safe in there forever. That's what you do, right? It's okay. It's good. Because kids like us, who've been through more than other kids, we're tougher than other kids. We're great builders. We make ourselves really safe, and no one ever gets in. Kelsey responds with, Mr. Smiley does. Of course, this simple reply is extremely poignant, which cuts to Theo's biggest flaw. While what she says is true, the visions and fears may not be able to physically harm her, it doesn't mean that the ghosts aren't able to hurt her mentally and cause her great emotional pain. Like Mr. Smiley, Hill House continues to haunt Theo, and no matter how many mental barriers she puts up, she'll always be haunted by the house. The more bricks she stacks, the more she seems to isolate herself. Her familial relationships deteriorates over time, and she seems unable to form meaningful connections with others. It is telling that Theo keeps her sexuality a secret from her family. It isn't until Nell and Steve catch her in the act with a bridesmaid that Theo's sexuality is ever brought up. This seems more of a need for privacy and her need to separate her lovers and passions from her real life. The Cranes as a family is very loving and open, so it doesn't seem like they would have judged her for it. Even Hugh and Olivia seem to have suspected even when Theo was a child, but seemed completely accepting. Her siblings were also accepting of her, so it would seem that this privacy was something that she was internalizing. With her adult and personal relationships, Theo is very distant and rather cold. She doesn't like being unnecessarily touched, and she is seen rejecting hugs even from her family. When she gets drunk and falls over at the family reunion at Nell's funeral, she reacts violently when Kevin and Luke try to help her up. She screams and says, I have enough of my own grief. I don't need yours too. In an attempt to protect herself from negative emotions and harm, she builds up psychological barriers to keep herself seemingly safe. Of course, this leads to some very unhealthy behaviors, and she ultimately self-destructs. Theo can be incredibly cruel, and she is seen lashing out, which causes more damage to her relationships. Her last meeting with Nell ends bitterly when the two argue over unresolved issues. 
The argument started because Nell wanted Theo to use her ability to see if Arthur is still present. But when Nell grabs Theo, Theo gets very upset with Nell, which triggers the argument. This leads Theo to say, Nellie, I've got your back, but I have limits. Which prompts a bitter response from Nell, who replies with, Only with us. Never with yourself. You've never cared about anyone more than yourself, and that's sad. While both sisters are being hurtful to each other, it is important to mention that Nell is exhibiting alarming behavior of psychological deterioration due to her grief of losing her husband. She's obviously in a lot of pain, and Theo's reaction is rather callous. While Theo is completely right in a lot of her assessment of Nell's emotional state, she quickly walls out Nell when Nell hurt her feelings. This is their last interaction while Nell was alive. Theo never calls to check up on Nell or attempt to visit Nell again. Her justification is that she wants Nell to apologize first to set boundaries. Of course, it ultimately just keeps Nell away. After Nell's death, Theo feels extremely angry that Nell selfishly took her own life. This is displacement and she is really angry at herself for acting selfishly during Nell's great time of need. When Theo later returns to the morgue alone during the night, she touches Nell's corpse, which causes her great emotional distress. She proceeds to cope with alcohol and sex. This incident leads her to act recklessly, and she tries to kiss Kevin during the night of the strange storm at the Harris funeral home. Shirley catches her in the act, and the two have a huge argument. The more Theo tries to control her emotions and feelings, the more she tends to lose control of them. She tries to stimulate herself with dance and sex, but she seems to lose interest in those things because they cannot truly bring her joy and happiness. Over and over, Theo self-destructs because she is unable to process her emotions and pain in a constructive and positive way. She copes with drinking, sex, and keeps everyone at an emotional and physical distance. She keeps thinking this will keep her safe, but it actually causes her great pain and ultimately works against her. This is especially ironic since she is a psychologist who makes her living identifying people's issues and helping them through it. But when it comes to her own trauma, she's completely lost. It would be easy to call Theo self-absorbed and selfish, but upon further inspection, she really isn't. She is incredibly brave. Even as a child, she stands strong in her convictions. When Mrs. Dudley grabs Luke, when she catches him playing with the dumbwaiter, Theo doesn't hesitate to jump in and stand up for him. When no one believes Luke about the hidden basement, Theo goes out of her way to prove that he was right. She becomes a child psychologist who helps children deal with trauma and emotional issues. She obviously cares a great deal about her patients. Similar to what happened with Luke, she goes out of her way to investigate Kelsey's Mr. Smiley. Later, she discovers that Mr. Smiley is actually Kelsey's foster dad who is sexually abusing her in the family basement. She moves in with Shirley, not because she wants a free place to stay, but because she cares a great deal about her sister and wants to keep close and be there for her. Both Theo and Shirley also share the same habit of icing people out and tend to set up emotional barriers to protect themselves but this just seems to hurt everyone involved. Out of the adult Crane siblings, Shirley and Theo are most seen together. The show spends a lot of time examining their relationship. They are both close, 
but get into some of the biggest, most heated arguments in the show. One about Theo accepting Steve's money and lying to Shirley about it, and then again when Theo tries to kiss Shirley's husband. The two sisters also experienced a strange loud banging, both as children, then again as adults. It has been hinted at being from Poppy's son, who used to communicate to his mother this way due to his incapacitating illness, which left him bound to a wheelchair. But there may seem to be more significance to why Shirley and Theo experience this haunting together. The banging on doors, windows, and walls are loud and ominous, but it could be viewed as a warning to the two Crane sisters. To open up and let their metaphorical walls down, or, in a more ominous tone, a warning that their thick walls will not keep them safe from the ghosts. Theo feels a great deal of guilt about what happened to Nell, and it is obvious that she starts spiraling due to this pain. Theo cares so much about the people in her life, but she is horrible at dealing with emotional baggage because she lives in fear of other people's emotions and traumas. While on the way to Hill House to try to save Luke, Shirley and Theo again enter into a heated argument. It takes an intervention from Nell, who scares them both off the road, that the sisters begin to open up to one another. Theo explains to Shirley why she kissed Kevin that night. She explained that it really wasn't about Kevin. Kevin was just another person there, like a lifeline that she clung to because she couldn't feel anything. After she touched Nell's dead body, she felt nothing but emptiness, and this scared her more than anything else. This feeling of emptiness is relentless and all-consuming, so when she was lost in the dark when the lights went out, she was terrified of being alone. When the lights finally came on, she couldn't help herself, and she reached out to Kevin. While Theo is sorry she hurt Shirley, she isn't necessarily sorry about what she did, because it got her to feel emotions again. She feels shame and guilt, but she says that this is preferable to feeling the absolute nothingness. Only when Theo is honest and Shirley is willing to listen do the two sisters reconcile. It is telling that when Theo is taken to the Red Room, her vision is rather brief, but poignant. When she first touches Trish, she's stunned that she doesn't feel anything. When Trish asks her what she usually feels, Theo responds with fear and guilt. Trish then launches into a monologue and says, Fear and guilt are sisters. I knew a man once who knew those sisters well. They kissed his eyelids as he slept, and every morning he went just a little more mad. So he built a wall to keep it all outside. But those two sisters, they were in there with him, even there. That silly man thought his wall would keep them out, but there were just enough room for him and them. So he was trapped behind that wall, afraid and guilty, and his voice left him, and he scratched and whimpered, and his fingers were shredded on his own bricks until his scratches just sounded like rats in a wall. He felt small, so small. But that was his dream, and when he woke up, he was tall, so tall, for always. Fear and guilt are sisters, Theodora, but when you wake, they'll leave you be, for always. This is, of course, Hill House's attempt to keep Theo. It offers an enticing promise for her to be free from fear and guilt. Of course, this is a trap that appeals to Theo's most inner desires. The dead hands reach out to grab her, symbolizing not only death, 
but the cold touch of emptiness and the nothingness she experienced when she touched Nell's body. This time, however, Nell's apparition comes to her rescue and instead of the emptiness, Nell's touch wakes Theo and frees her from Hill House's clutches. It is interesting that the alternate Trish tells the story of William Hill, the man in the bowler hat. Theo never sees him, but the symbolism and cautionary tale is clear. Both William and Theo walls themselves in to keep themselves safe from others. Theo metaphorically, but William physically. But the results are quite the same. It leaves them alone with their fear and guilt. And walls keep others out, but can also trap you in. The vision is also incredibly telling of her longing for a connection. It is significant that Trish is in the vision. Throughout their whole courtship, Theo, while she was the one who initiated their meeting, is constantly pushing Trish away, treating her like a one-night stand. Trish, however, is relentless and seems to feel a genuine connection to Theo. When Theo was having a rough night after having to call the police on Kelsey's foster dad, she calls Trish over. Trish obliges, even though in their last two meetings, Theo treated Trish horribly. In a rare moment of vulnerability, Theo opens up to Trish and asks her to come to bed so she can for just a moment feel something else other than the sadness and pain. Trish also shows up unexpectedly at Nell's funeral to support Theo, who at first seems furious with her, but quickly calms down and is later seen greatly comforted by Trish's presence. Theo is able to overcome her emotional baggage when she lets her guard down. She's able to reconnect with Shirley when she's completely honest with her and tells her how she actually feels. When she meets Nell again in the Red Room, she doesn't hesitate to apologize about how their lads' words were in anger, which Nell replies with, they weren't our last. She's able to have closure with Nell only when she puts her icy persona aside and just apologize. At the conclusion of Theo's story, we see her moving out of Shirley's guest house, but seemingly by choice and on good terms. She's being helped by Trish, who is helping her move and putting things into the trash. As a callback to her time at Hill House with Hugh and the wine bottle, Theo, instead of hanging on to something from the past, chooses to leave something behind. She decides to trash her gloves and chooses to experience life without her walls. She's seen kissing and embracing Trish, and the two leave hand in hand. The last shot of Theo is of her with her remaining family and loved ones. Trish is by Theo's side as they celebrate Luke's second year of being drug-free.